Hello, my name is Anthony Hall and in this tutorial we're going to go through some basic modelling tools to come up with this uh, ice cream cone with the little sprinkles and the flake and so on. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start by just going up to edit, backdrop options and then in my bottom right which is here I'm going to load up an image of a cone for reference in the background for me to uh, create my model around. So usually with stuff like this, that's geometry is the same all the way around. You could use the lathe tool, but we've done that tutorial. So what I want to do is show you another way. So we're going to go to multiply uh, on a new layer. Uh, so we're going to go to create and we're going to start off with a disk. Now I'm going to hold control down to lock my proportions and just pull out a rough shape of the disc like so. Then I'm going to use the move tool and in this view here I'm just going to drag it down so it's roughly in line here as you can see with the blue line. Oh, if I select it with the polygons, the yellow line there, so you can see the polygon I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is go to multiply and this time I'm going to use multi shift. Let's bring up the numerical. Uh, and what I'm going to use is different uh, shifts of bevel. So this is kind of like a, bevel, uh, a more advanced bevel tool, this one. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make different uh, shifts of the bevel coming up to build up the shape of the actual cone. So here in Masavi, I'm going to left mouse click, pull up, but I'm also going to pull to the side. So I get like this shape here. So what I'm doing is actually making the first part, the bottom part, that con that makes up the cone. Now I want these little indents to be separate. So I'm going to build up the shifts in between each one of these. So I'm going to right, while I'm still on it, if you right mouse click and pull up, you'll get like a new indent. I'm going to pull up, look, and then pull out to the side and roughly going in line with the actual contours of the cone and then I'm going to right mouse click again bring up and pull to the side again following the contours but also making my polygons be in line with these lines look on the cone pull up again pull to the side and again one more last time let's pull to the side down a little bit like so, and then I keep doing it. I want to pull to the side, pull up, pull to the side again. I'm just using the same tool up to the side, up, up, pulling it in this time, one more time, and then I'm pulling it up like so a few times. So I'm literally just going up and down, side to side, to make the contours like so. And here, look, it's got shift 16 shifts. So what that is, is 16 times I've actually used the tool over and over again to make these bevels. So you can actually go back through these, look. So if I go to 10 and I wanted to kind of come in here and manipulate 10, do you know what I mean? To bring it in a little bit, I could. And you can keep going through the different seg segments to, to you want to manipulate each one. So you can actually go back through the bevels. So it's like having multiple bevels, but ones that you can go back to uh, and manipulate throughout. Like so. Yeah. Well, let's pull this up and bring this in a little bit. Like so. So yeah, it's quite a cool little tool to play with and manipulate and it's got all the like I said 16 bit parts that I can jump through and manipulate each one while it's live so I'm looking at this uh, I'm going to say I'm happy with it so I'm going to drop the tool now why the top selected I'm just going to press delete on my keyboard just to get rid of it because I don't want to use it and we've got the basic outline of the actual cone ready to next steps okay let's have a look at the next step so we're just going to texture wire uh, let's have a look at what we've got here so far. Which, yeah, about right. I am zipping through this quite quickly, like most of them. I try to on most of my tutorials. So 
uh, if I just have a think about the actual uh, cone itself, it's got these little indents look. So I would probably, I'm not sure if I would make them or if I would use like a normal map or bump map to fake it. But if I was going to make it, I've done it. I've made the shifts purposely in line with these so you can select these polys to kind of push back. So let's have a go at that and see how we get on. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, while I'm on the polygon tool, I'm going to right mouse click so I can lasso round these polys here. And while they're selected, go to select loop. Once I've selected it all, what we could do is we need to I'd rather if you look at the actual image it's got a bit of a board around them so maybe just use a simple bevel tool I'm going to hold down control and drag to the side so what we do is this is built up now like a little uh, board around for us so once we've done that so we've done a little bevel so let's see if we can bevel it in there and when I've beveled it in, I'm going to right mouse click and bevel it again. But at an angle, so it comes in like that maybe. Let's have a look. Because I don't want it going too far. Something like that. So, again, spacebar, drop the selection. And then we've kind of got those shapes of the cone. Like so. Let's go back. Now another thing we can do is it's got no bottom, so let's uh, jump to our points, right mouse click, and you get this little lasso tool, and lasso around the bottom. So we've got all the actual polygons uh, points selected. Just press P on your keyboard, and that'll make it into a poly. Let's jump back to polygon options. Go to bevel. I'm going to hold down Control, which will lock the access to coming just coming in. Um, I'm going to bevel it in once, then I'm going to right mouse click, still holding control, bevel it in again. I'm not too bothered about what the bottom looks like, so I'm not going to, I don't want it to be, maybe not be in my render. And then while you've actually got the polygon selected and you're on the multiply tab, go to more and make pole. And then we can, you've got that kind of loop in the edge going round. So another thing before I come on to the next step is I don't want this bottom so sharp so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my space box I've jumped to edge or you can slick select your edge here select a few edges holding shift go to select loop and then under that under the multiply tab click chamfer and let's just chamfer it a little bit and then space bar and then drop the selection with forward slash so it's a bit better like that okay so next let's uh, Let's use the lasso tool again. So I'm on polygons and let's just lasso. So I'm going to select the top bit like so. I'm not bothered about the rest. I'm just going to then go to thicken tool. I'm just going to thicken it in. And then on my numerical options, I've got it on two segments. So, so like that. So this top bit's uh, thicken. It don't really matter about the inside because I'm not going to see that because the ice cream's going to be on top. So you've got that. You can actually still come in and manipulate some of this stuff if you're not happy with it. Uh, currently, I'm just going to leave it the way it is, I think. Uh, but again, I'm rushing through this. So anyway, next step. Let's just double click the actual layer. Let's just call this uh, cone. OK, like so. Uh, new layer. Put that in the background. Let's make the ice cream. So we're going to go to create ball. Uh, numerical let's just bring this in uh, let's bring it up and that. let's play about so what I'm trying to do in these side views is I'm just trying to make the ball roughly fit inside like so but also uh, fit the circumference of the actual top of the cone I also it says type here look you see on the uh, the numerical so if you haven't got the numerical why it's active bring it up let's tessellate so we'll bring up and we'll leave it at four so we've got the tessellation part like so uh, and it's more of an egg shape which I'm, I'm fine with 
uh, and let's leave everything else the same. Let's drop it and press spacebar. So I'm happy with that. So as the top of the ice cream, let's go in a new layer. Put the ice cream in a different uh, in the background, and then use a box. We're just going to boolean the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boolean, making sure the box goes all the way through. Look in the top view. So it's actually we're using it as a cutting tool. Let's switch the layers back round. So whatever's in the background is in negative space. You go to construct, boolean. It's already on subtract. And then we're going to subtract the bottom bit because we don't want that. And then just delete that. Uh, I also don't want that bottom bit there. So I'm going to select the bottom of the ice cream and delete that as well. So what we've got is this top bit. We can press the tab key to smooth it if you want. Let's put the cone in the background. Let's have a look. So we've got this kind of ice cream now at the top but it's a bit too perfect scoops of ice cream definitely don't come out that smooth or oh, looks more like an egg so let's just deform it slightly so let's keep it simple let's go to what can we go to let's go to multiply go right down you got this tool called fracturize open it up and it is a warning that depending on um, Based on how much you put in here, it could take longer. But leave the default settings. Just press OK, and it will like it does like a 3D noise blur on it, so you get that. So it's not so perfect. So now we've got like a ice cream that's been put in that looks more less perfect, really, which is pretty cool. Let's double click the layer. Let's just call this um, I don't know cream. Okay, and so next. So we've got the like cone, we've got like an ice cream. And again, you can make this big or you can, it's up to you, but I'm just going to zip through it, see what we come up with. So anyway, we've got the ice cream, but it needs some uh, hundreds and thousands on. I think that's what they're called, or sprinkles. So let's make some sprinkles. So it's going a blank layer, put the ice cream in the background. We're just going to use the capsule tool, bring up the numerical. That's a way too big. Uh, let's put in something like 30, uh, 90 millimetres, not metres. Like so. And then let's start bringing it even further down. Because all I want is this like little tiny pill shape. Uh, looking at the size compared to what it will be on top. So I think it's still probably too thin and also we don't need all these sides I don't think let's reduce these a little bit like so so we've got this like little pill shape and again how big it is is up to you let's go I'm going to go with that so that's there's my size look you can make a UV if you want no nope, I'm not bothered so I'm going to drop that let's have a look at it on its own so I'm pressing A on my keyboard I'm going to press tab to smooth it and then I'm going to move it so a little bit of it's below this black line because I'm going to use uh, the place mesh tool which I did in a different tutorial to show you how to use this again. So I've got that. I'm going to double click the layer and just call and call it. I'm going to be lazy, just call it one. And then while I'm on it, I'm going to press Q on my keyboard, which is for set surface. And let's call this uh red one so this is going to be the red hundred and thousands i'm only going i want to make five of them uh make smoothing on like so and then i'm going to copy it paste it and then i'm going to repeat this giving them a different name let's call this two q on my keyboard and let's call this white one and let's call give this a white color okay so again Copy, paste, free, Q, uh, yellow maybe. I can't believe I'm struggling to think of colours. Oh, it's, ah, it's a Monday. Copy, paste, four, Q, it's green one. And then uh, let's do a blue one. 
I don't know what colour hundreds and thousands are. Oh, blue one. That'll do. You can do whatever colour you want. So I've got these in the same place, all different colours, okay? So how am I going to do this? I'm going to select the cream and I'm going to put my five hundred and thousands in the background. I'm going to go to multiply, place mesh, bring up the numerical. Uh, I'm going to leave everything the same apart from I'm going to give a pitch 45, uh, random heading 90 and a little 10% scale difference. And then I'm going to click populate and wait. Okay, so you can see it all the way around all these. So let's drop it, drop the tool. Let's have a look what we've got. Okay, what we've got is lots of hundreds and thousands wrapped around like so. Which is cool. I mean, you can add more if you want. You can go back and add more if you want. Or you can do it individually. That, that's completely up to you. Uh, you can have, have... Let's put these in the background again and show you what I mean. So you could go back to place mesh. Uh, and we could just click and do them separately and like each time it will paste a different colour in for you. So you can randomise it if you want as well doing that. So it's going to go through and choose a different one if you want. Okay, uh, like I'm happy with that. I actually, let's have a look. So why I'm on here, what I'm going to do is I forgot to colour the eye screen give it a texture so what I'm going to do is just choose one polygon go to selections connected to select it all Q on your keyboard let's call this cream and just give it like a a very light creamy color maybe like so it's more green that's not good uh, Is it more of a yellowy kind of? Okay, still not great, but anyway. Also, the cone, let's give the cone, let's call it cone, give it a surface name. It's probably more of a uh, orangey colour, is it? I think let's just do that for the time being, anyway. Okay. So here's a greeny coloured ice cream on top with a lot of hundreds and thousands. And again, I, I mean, I don't know now looking at how I made my hundreds and thousands too small, but that's up to you. You can experiment but as long as you understand the tools. Uh, so next, uh, let's add some little juice on top and stuff, shall we? So go in a new layer put the cream in the background now for this I'm using a plugin now it's called PX Bezier I've done it on my five top uh, plugins that are free so I'll put the link to getting that plugin and downloading it afterwards as well so let's just have a look in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to additionals go down because I haven't got it in my interface on this computer uh, here we go PX Bezier Bring up the numerical. Now, when this comes up, you just need to make sure that you're on belt. So, if I want to drop down here, look the polygon type, I have it on belt. And I've got it on seven segments, radius 20 millimeters. Uh, and so, I'll just quickly show you to so make sure you've got the same settings. But you might have a different, you based on how big you make this, you might want different settings anyway. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the middle. And I'm going to draw out and I'm going to start drawing out a spiral shape kind of coming out using these little handle handles to manipulate it. And I don't really want it to be spot on perfect either. So because you don't actually get that perfectly. And again, I'm not sure if this is this actually limits you to so many handles. I can't remember, but I'm going to do it as you can see fairly quick and not worry about it because I just want you to understand how to you kind of use the tool 
more than anything. So I'm outside here, don't matter. Okay, it seems to not let me do any more. So that'll do. Drop the selection. Let's go back. So we've got this little spiral. So let's now move it on top. So if you watch me over two tutorials as well, I did one about the heat shrink tool. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to heat shrink it around the background layer. So modify heat shrink numerical. I've got it on sphere, it seems to work best for this. And then I'm going to pull it so it pulls it into the ice cream like so. Drop the selection, go to multiply, and then let's bevel this out like so. Uh, sorry, not bevel, thicken it out using the thicken tool. Uh, and on it, I've got a factor of two for the segments like so. So now what I've got is this like juice going around it so let's uh, call this uh, juice let's cue on the keyboard call it juice let's give it a uh, ready color okay let's have a look and now we've got a bit of juice around it as well uh, last bit try and do this quicker I always aim I can get this tutorial done in five minutes it's 20 minutes it took me uh, let's go and put the cream in the background so let's make a little flake a crude one quick one as well let's use the disc tool should I use the disc tool yeah let's use the disc tool let's bring it up roughly the size of what I want my flake to be I don't want it to be too big bring up the numerical let's add some segments to this like so yep that'll do uh, let's call it flake give it a surface name flake give it a color of a uh, I don't know is it brown like a chocolatey brown I don't know we'll go with that even though it's not so I think it needs to be darker and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to multiply let's use the fractalize tool again same setting see if this that's all right <laughs> for a quick guess so that'll do and then you can simply rotate it and then stick it in your ice cream wherever you kind of want like so and what you've got is a very quick but you get the gist and we're using multiple tools and some of the tools I've gone through to come up with this little ice cream uh, as a starting point so Again, I think the hundreds and thousands could be more, maybe a bit bigger and randomise the size. But in general, uh, yeah, pleased with that. So that's how you model an ice cream cone or how I've done it. So thanks for listening. Please share. Look out for my other tutorials. Go and check out my Facebook group, Lightwave Salvation. Look out for my next tutorial. See you then.